This is DJ Labuga, Garifuna Music and Talk. Welcome to my Wednesday show. Tonight it is another special night. Like every Wednesday, we are going to feature the brand new album from Super G. It's a Spanish album that he recorded and it's called Una Noche Mas. A brand new album that has been out for at least six months. But not a lot of people know about it, and so we want to make sure we get the word out for the general, Mr. Super G. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm trying to put out the word out there on Facebook. If you want to join us, my friend, my Facebook page is Roni Figueroa, R-O-N-Y Figueroa, F-I-G-U-E-R-O-A. You can request to be your friend. I will accept it right away. So you could get to not only see what we're playing, but also write it down, you know, and, and send any shout-outs uh, to anybody out there, and I will make sure that I read him on the air. I want to thank uh, especially to Radio Centro America, a beautiful corporation in downtown Los Angeles, Jacobo Ortiz, Antonio Sanchez, uh, Gustavo Seventh and many, many more people who are involved in this wonderful project called RadioCentroAmerica.com. They are the ones who allow us to be here live every Wednesday from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. So thank you again. We are live from the studios in Long Beach, and we welcome you to our show, DJ La Buga, Garifuna Music and Talk, every Wednesday. Tonight we have a very special guest. We have Jerry Castro. Jerry is a grassroots and legislative advocate. He will be discussing domestic issues affecting Garinagu nationally and in Central America. 
with members of Congress at Capitol Hill. That is Mr. Jerry Castro. He was uh, born in Guatemala, raised in New York, and then eventually he moved to Houston, Texas, Texas, where he resides now and where he is politically involved, advocating for the Garifuna community. Today is Wednesday, June 25, 2014, and we are live from the studios in Long Beach. I want to thank you again for tuning in. And let me play a few station IDs. So we are doing good for the business and we legitimize our show every Wednesday. This is RadioCentroamerica.com, the station without borders. Let us know what you want to hear by calling 323-898-6841 or from our Facebook page at Ronnie Figueroa. Esta es Radio Centroamérica y su programa de música y de temas de la comunidad garífuna con DJ La Buga, que se transmite a través de www.radiocentroamerica.com todos los miércoles de 8.30 a 10.30 de la noche. Escúchenos. Garifuna American Heritage Foundation United Incorporated through its Clifford J. Palacio Garifuna Language and Culture Academy invites you to the Saturday classes every Saturday at 11 in the morning at 8039 South Vermont, Los Angeles, California, 90044, corner of 81st and Vermont. For more information, visit our website, www.garifunaheritagefoundation.org or call 323-898-6841. We are right on the corner of Vermont at 81st at the Community Center, Luba Furende Gafu, guest teachers every week. Don't forget, language and drumming, as well as Zumba Luma Punta classes for free for all every Saturday beginning March 22nd throughout the year 2014, 11 a.m. for the Garifuna language classes and 12 o'clock for the Zumba Luma Punta. Get fit, stay fit with Zumba Luma Punta, free classes for the entire family. Bring your drums and bring the family and we'll have a good time. Learn Garifuna classes are interactive and you will learn through singing and drumming. Come and learn about the Garifuna culture and history taught by Garifuna scholars from the diaspora. This is an invitation by GAFU, the Garifuna American Heritage Foundation United. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And this is the beginning of the show. We have the one and only Jerry Castro, uh, who is on the other line. Jerry is going to be our guest speaker tonight. And we're going to have an open talk about what's going on in the Garifuna community. We will be discussing the issues regarding immigration. Of course, the issues with the children coming from Central America, especially Garifuna children who are coming with their mother are sometimes unaccompanied, you know, and they are being detained at the border between Mexico and the United States. So, Mr. Jerry Castro, Ida Biangi Nomada. I'm doing good, man. I would just want to ask you to lower the volume of your computer. I know you want to hear yourself. Uh, so, lower the volume so we don't get feedback. One second, one second. Okay. Better? Beautiful. Thank you, Jerry. I okay. appreciate that. Perfect. Thank you, brother. So, the microphone yeah. is yours, man. Yeah. Um, bueno, um, buenas noches a todos los televidentes, no televidentes, a los um, radio escuchas. To, to the listeners, <laughs> radio escuchas. Uh, estamos sintonizados con el mejor que está en el, en el sistema DJ La Buda. Gracias, eh, Jerry. Es un placer tener a Jerry. Jerry es trilingüe, habla español, habla garífuna, su lengua nativa, y habla también el inglés. Um, we could continue the interview however you want, Jerry. I'm not too fluent in, yeah, yeah. in, in garífuna yet, even though I've been taking classes for yeah. forever. But, um, you know, it's a difficult language. It's a beautiful language, very similar to Spanish, French, Portuguese, and all of that. But um, still, you know, I'm still having trouble understanding and, of course, speaking back. But anyway, welcome to the show, Jerry. And tell us the affairs of the nation right now. What's going on uh, in the United States in regards to the Garifuna community? Well, uh, we are, well, I'm here in D.C. for National Caribbean American Heritage Month, Legislative Week. Uh, this year is the 16th year. 
and fortunately through uh, our members, um, I'm a co-chair the national policy agenda uh, of legislative week, which deals with immigration reform, uh, minimum wage, ACA, which is the new health care law signed by the president a couple of years ago, um, and small business forums. Uh, today was a very heavy and uh, interesting day uh, for legislative week. Uh, we had two forums today, uh, one dealing with the uh, International Foreign Affairs, um, which was quite interesting. I learned a lot about uh, how one of our countries, uh, through uh, which is a member of CARICOM, is um, uh, you know will be making a lot of um, progress in the near future in this country. I believe. Um, very interesting conversation. Uh, many countries and many regions have uh, trade agreements, uh, but apparently uh, the president signed a memorandum of understanding on how uh, CARICOM countries uh, can go and conduct businesses and all that stuff in open market, and I happened to listen to that today, and it was great. Um, I, we, also, we also went through... Um, the hearing that was happening with uh, with the Judiciary Committee uh, today uh, in relates in related in relates to uh, the issue of the unaccompanied children who have crossed the border to come to the United States. This has been on the news lately. Um, there has been a lot of noise in regards to children of of the Caribbean coast. Uh, and that's just kids from the Caribbean coast of Central America, but children who are crossing the border and who are right now detained and staying in, in shelters, uh, immigration shelters within the South and all that stuff. Wow. The issue with these with the, with these guys, with this with with, the, with these with these children is that uh, they are being. Um, they don't have any attorneys, uh, so um, which is, uh, you know, unheard of. I mean, a report came out the other day on news that we have perhaps uh, the best system to, to serve and provide legal assistance to the worst criminals in the country, uh, but not these children. And a couple of Democrats have introduced the legislation. Uh, which is co-sponsored by Congress member uh, Hakeem Jeffries from Brooklyn. Uh, and this is to provide, again, um, uh, attorneys to represent the interests of these children who uh, are fleeing this country, uh, fleeing the countries uh, from a lot of the stuff that's going on out there and stuff. Um, we also happen to, I also, we also happen to uh, go to a um, a, a legislative um, forum um, where um, Bronx Congress member um, Elliot Engel uh, has a bill out there uh, to to sort of like combat crime and children uh, traffic trafficking children and, and humans and all that good stuff. Um, very interesting. Uh, conversation. Um, I learned that Congressman Elliot Engel has been through all parts of our countries uh, back in Central America, and he is a, a champion of human rights. Uh, he spoke about how he worked in the past on addressing issues in Congress on the matters that uh, human rights issues uh, in in Colombia too, he they use it as, as an example of how Colombia today is flourishing, but then again, the other countries are going through a lot and all that stuff. So it's been a very interesting, interesting week. Um, there was another fellow Garifuna uh, uh, joining us. Um, you may know her. Uh, she's a professor over at CUNY. Um, uh, Aisha, Aisha Lang, uh, 
and uh, the late the, the the producer who who oh, made yeah. that Punta Rock uh, Punta Sol. Well, um, Punta Sol video. Yeah, she she right, right, right. She was there, and she was one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the delicate members who came on came over today and was was very very instrumental in making sure in going to visit members of Congress to talk about the many issues, and it was it was it was just great. Wow, that's that's excellent. Jerry, um, I am really concerned about the affairs of these children. Uh, is there anything yes. that um, any Garifuna organization is doing or delegates of uh, some type of uh, government from Honduras or Guatemala or Belize for that matter? I am sure that there are not only Garifuna children from Honduras, uh, detained. I think they. It's probably going across the board. It's as bad as it is yeah, in uh, Honduras, uh, Guatemala, and Belize, and Nicaragua. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I haven't come across any reference of any group, uh, Garifuna group, uh, or any group uh, doing anything in regards to um, the children. Uh, but I know that uh, you know the one thing about. Uh, uh, I guess the American community or the immigrant community is uh, whenever situations like this come up, uh, people open up their hearts. So I know that there are communities across Texas, across Phoenix, who are uh, getting um, diapers, uh, water, um, uh, no, non perishable items to these children and this stuff. Because when this report came out, it came out as if that um, there were hundreds of kids within the detention centers that were not being adequately treated. Uh, that they were um, the 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 the, the, uh, the the facilities they were in uh, they were not uh, the, the the sanitation was not uh, up to par. You know what I mean? Yes, um, yes. This is how this came out a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and from then, there has been a lot of movements. Uh, I believe Hillary Clinton went out there a couple of um, this past weekend, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so it, it's got it's gotten not only uh, a national attention, but a lot of the grassroots, especially immigration uh, grassroots, um, have are doing what they're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be doing, rather, to make sure that you know these children are taken care of and all that stuff. It will be great uh, to have a mix that includes uh, Garrison organizations yeah. uh, who can travel or who can, you know, uh, one day in uh, California, one day in New York, one day in Texas, uh, similar to what happened last year during the Christmas flood in St. Vincent, St. Lucia, and Dominica, uh, where we can come together and put together our efforts to Hey, you know what? Um, uh, when you go to Walmart, uh, pick up a bag uh, of of canned food, uh, pick up a uh, deodorant, pick up uh, uh, you know diapers, pick up some some stuff that can you know you can take over to your consul's office, your consulate office. Hey. Hello. Yes, yes, I hear you, Jerry. I'm sorry. I was talking to Cheryl Norales, who is uh, the president of Gafu who is also sitting here at the table with me, and who voiced out her concern. She says, what can the community do to help or advocate for the children? Um, And when I said earlier today, has any Garifuna organization done anything about it? I don't want to put any organization out there because I know that a lot of organizations don't have this as part of their mission statement. They're not here to help immigrant children or immigrant people, period. You know what I mean? But we can come together as a community and help. Right, right, right. And, and, and it's not about, you know, bashing or singling out organizations. Right. Half of them, most of them at times uh, may not know how to go about these process. And exactly. Uh, but, you know, um, again, you know, we've come to these things almost every year, and every year you learn to get, you learn new things. But because of this crisis going on right now, you know, the question is, you know, 
who get won't have because it's not just uh Chumag children who are crossing. There uh-huh. are there are Garifun children, you know, oh, children yeah. of color. We who see them are Jerry part of this mix. Let me interrupt you real quick. I have seen some disturbing videos that are coming out on my Facebook page and these are videos of Garifuna young uh yes not children i think these guys are teenagers and beyond teenage years who are posting right. Right. their videos on their trip from honduras passing through guatemala and mexico most of the videos i have seen are filmed in mexico while they are board, on board of or on top of the beast the beast happens to be mm-hmm. the the freight train that comes from Chiapas all the way to northern Mexico, and that's how a lot of immigrants um, get a free ride. And not only that, they get to go through um, uh, Mexico undetected because there is no immigration checking the freight trains for illegal passengers right. coming on board. And they're not only coming right. on top of the trains, they are coming um, with any safety devices, with no seats. They're just hanging on to the to the stairways or to the um, guard railing and on top of the freight train. You know what I mean? You probably have seen the videos. It is disturbing. It, 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 it is it is a it is a dangerous sacrifice to uh, hope and try to live the American dream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and 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 this is the moment now where you know if you are a community organization, if you are a member of a community organization, this is what you know we were created for. This is what the organizations were created for to provide. Some type of service, um, uh, you know, to the, to these to these kind of crises and all that stuff. You know what I mean? But again, um, you know, it, it is it is dangerous. Uh, you know, I, I I haven't seen the videos, but you know, my mother came in here many years ago, and I'm always open about this uh, through the border, just as many other people came through through the border and stuff. And we have heard stories about what happens on the border to which, you know, I can just imagine, I've never been to that kind of situation. Uh, I can imagine, you know, what they have to go through, you know, perhaps going days without eating. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that yes. kind of stuff on top of facing a lot of, a lot of danger through the trains and I mean, un- unknown things happening simply to come and live that train. You know what I'm saying? Jerry, so, I um, have uh, you know, Ms. Fidelis Nunez is on Facebook yes. requesting to call uh, a conference number so we could have a conference call. I think we're going to have to hang up, and then I'm going to have to open the lines uh, with uh, Uber. I'm going to give you the number so you could call in, and Fidelis Nunez can also join or maybe I could just use my phone, the one I'm using with you right now, and do the, the, a conference call. The great thing about Fidelis, uh, her senior senator, uh, Richard Durbin, has a bill out there. Uh, uh, senator Durbin has been on top of this thing, and he has a bill out uh, in the Senate, uh, again, to combat this matter. Because what's coming out from the other side of the aisle uh, from the Republican side, uh, they're blaming DACA and all of these different services that had been uh, um, in in on point um, in the system for many years, and this is the reason why uh, kids are being sent over here. There have been many different reasons of why, and this is why this morning when we when we went to Senator uh, Congress Member uh, Elliot Engel's uh, meeting. He said that this was not, this is not an issue about services. This is an issue that these children are looking at war and they're fleeing wars. And now we have, um, we have a responsibility to make sure that just like we have taken care of other children, that these children should not be any different than the other children that have, we have helped in, in, in years past. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Fidelis Nunez says she just wanted to listen in to, to the show. I hope uh, that she's able to 
to log in through TuneIn or www.radiocentralamerica.com. Um, interesting topic, Jerry. Oh. How can we? Let me let me throw a question real quick that uh, the president yes. of Gafu, Ms. Cheryl Norales, was asking. She says, can, "How can we identify if any Garifuna children are being detained? Uh, how can we outreach and advocate for these children?" The, the ones who uh, the ones who are very close to what's happening and and on this matter are the embassies or consulate offices. Uh, so the best bet to go is to reach out to the consul's office of I believe Honduras or, or Guatemala in your in your in your in your in your, in your city, correct? Yes. Um, I don't know. Uh, there are there are chances chances are that you know they want, they, we might make a trip over there, but it's not sure whether we are or not. Uh, but the best bet to go is to is to reach out to the uh, to the consul's office. Um, again, there has been many reports. There have been many um, photos put out there uh, where there is it's clear that there are kids out there. Uh, I'm gonna go wabi again. Uh, who are they? Don't know. Who are their relatives? Don't know. Um, uh, but but that is that is that is the uh, that is the scary that, that is the scary unknown because you know there are kids out there, uh, but nobody's claiming who they are and uh, who their parents are and all that stuff. Um, I, what perhaps can do can do is uh, again. You know, the community come together, uh, send someone out there uh, to sort of like relay, check it out, uh, or reach out to your member of Congress, uh, just like each and every other groups are doing around the country, and just ask them, you know, what's happening with the unaccompanied minors who cross the border. Um, uh, can you identify who who can who can who can who where these where these kids are coming from? Because as of for right now, the number the number one uh, the people who are very close in working with this issue is not the city, not the mayor, actually your state that your your state house representative or congress member or U.S. Senate U.S. Senate because that's what they're doing here in D.C. They are working on this matter uh, ASAP with the stuff. Yes, Jerry. Um, I am surprised that I haven't heard from our immigration lawyer from Yurume Law, Miss Sharon S. K. Williams. She has not mentioned have, anything about working with any of these children. I know this is a brand new case, a brand new situation that just emerged in the past uh, thirty mm -hmm. days to us. But I am, I am sure that this has been going on for quite a while. But we had Ms. Sharon um, a couple of weeks ago um, joining the discussion about Paranda music. But I, I hope that she's listening tonight and able to call in and maybe shed some light right. on what's really going on. There you if go. She has heard anything regarding uh, immigrant Garifuna children who are being detained in the U.S.-Mexico border due to the illegal migration um, trying to flee their country, uh, whether it is Nicaragua, yeah. Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, for the lack of uh, opportunities, jobs, education, uh, living well, you know? And and because they are escaping warfare, I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, back home has gone into this, has flipped from being a paradise in the past to now being a a a a a a, a highway of trafficking. Do you understand? Yes. Uh, and when it comes to that matter, you know, that brings uh, a lot of not good things where. The ones who get will get impacted are children. You know what I mean? Um, so that's 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 what Congress is working on right now. Uh, and the reason why I'm, I'm emphasizing on Congress because that's one that's that was one of the main item agendas that we worked on this morning in trying to address this. 
um, um, you might have seen a photo that I have with uh, Congress member Joaquin Castro from San Antonio, oh, yes. who was in that uh, who was in that hearing this morning and during our conversation, he said, "Hey, you know what? Um, this is the reason why immigration reform has to pass because of the simple fact that you know these kids are uh, you know this 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 is one of the reasons." This is the main reason why immigration reform has to pass because um, if countries are going to ravage, if countries are going to ravage in situations, they're going to end up not because they want to they want to come and hang out. It's because uh, some of these countries are going through ravaging situation in, to, to the point where there is war going on out there and all that stuff. But let me let me play the devil's advocate, uh, Jerry. I know for a fact that the United States has a minimum of four or five military bases, if not bases, locations only in the country of Honduras. Not to uh, take into account Belize. I know they have a presence in Belize. I not too sure if they have a presence in Guatemala, but I know they have certain elements of the U.S. Army working in Guatemala, helping the the poor. Nege, you know what I mean. So we know right. that there are uh, some type of influence. Uh, you know, the United States has its hands all over, and Honduras mm-hmm. is one of the countries. You know, so. Can they give back? Is there anything that they could do to help Honduras with the illegal immigration? Uh, I don't know, creation of jobs, I, training I, of people. I, uh, you name I, it. I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, it, well, it, it, this question was asked by a, a a young man to Congress member Elliot Engel today. Um, who said, who asked the question on, you know, the part of the reason why Colombia is successful today was because of the military presence as well, in addition to other things, to make Colombia what it is. Um, you know, is, 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 and then he asked, uh, and is there a presence in Central America where perhaps uh, because of trafficking, uh, these children and family say, you know whether or not they were present there, uh, but you know, as you say, everybody knows what's going on. What is being done? What what kind of a military efforts is going on? I, I couldn't be able to tell you. Uh, what are they doing there? What kind? Of, to what capacity are they are, are they there? You know, I mean, that would be something between. That would be a question that should be asked. Uh, to the Honduran government as of to how the Honduran government is utilized in the U.S. military services um, on both ends and all that stuff. So I, I think it's the opposite. That, uh, I, I think it's the opposite. I think it's the U.S. using Honduras to have a post to be able to control the drug trafficking and right. what have you. Right. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind right. you, this is uh, Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. We have on the line via telephone from Washington, D.C., the Garifuna Grassroots Advocate, Mr. Jerry Castro Cayetano, who is uh, discussing the issues of the month of June being the Caribbean Heritage Month, which is coming to an end, with a lot of celebrations going on, not only on the West Coast, in Houston, but also on the East Coast, in many other places in the United States. I want to send a big shout out to the listeners who have been uh, with us from 8.30 p.m. tonight, Pacific Standard Time. We have El Lobo Solitario, who is a longtime radio DJ in Guatemala City. He's listening in Guatemala, El Lobo Solitario. Mi amigo tremendo, a través del internet Saludos para ti. Um, also, I want to send a big shout out to Arita Williams. She's listening here in Los Angeles. Also, Patricia Randall, another Garifuna young girl uh, from Belizean uh, descent. Also, let's see who else. Yolanda Savio is also listening here in Los Angeles. She's related to Miss Savio, who lives in Houston, Texas. You know who I'm talking about, right? That's right. Yes. yes, I know. I know. We had a, we, we had an event a couple of years ago um, where 
Congresswoman Shirley Jackson Lee issued out a certificate of recognition for a Garrison celebration. I believe me, Savia was part of, was, was in the crowd alongside oh, wow. One Love from Caribbean newspaper and all that good stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, let me finish the shout outs. We also have Julie Lisette Flo listening in the valley. Um, we also have, uh, let's see, Pedro Loranca listening. He's a listener of Radio Central America dot com. Maria Calvillo and also um, Vicky Valenzuela. Many, many other people who are listening live right now on uh, either through TuneIn, if you have a smartphone, or if you have a computer, you listen live on www.radiocentralamerica.com. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to my show. This is a weekly radio show every Wednesday from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. And today we have a special phone call uh, from Washington, D.C., a Garifuna advocate, a grassroots advocate, a uh, very long friend, a uh, long-time friend of GAFU, the Garifuna American Heritage Foundation, Mr. Jerry Castro Cayetano. Well, thank you once again, uh, Ronnie, and, uh, and happy Caribbean American Heritage Month to you and GAFU. I know that a couple of years ago, um, you guys did an opening for the kickoff of Caribbean American Heritage Month. And I know also that uh, uh, Greg Palacio was featured and was honored for his contribution uh, in promoting and spreading uh, Caribbean heritage through his painting, you know, through yes. our cultures and all that good stuff. So, um, and, and, and again, it's an honor, it's a privilege uh, to be part of this. Uh, we had a long discussion this morning today. Um, on how we're going to move forward in preparation for the 10th year anniversary next year, uh, to which we're kicking off uh, immediately after tomorrow. Um, just just to kind of like give you a heads up, um, we're going to be over at the White House tomorrow for the White House briefing. Um, and this is typically where the administration comes over and sort of like give a summary on what's happening and what kind of initiatives the White House is doing. Uh, in relation to the Caribbean businesses and Caribbean community as a whole. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a few girlfriends come over. Uh, but again, uh, this is an opportunity, again, for leaders. And, and you know, and again, I'm going to invite everybody to get engaged, uh, an opportunity for leaders to, you know, get to know how things are working from this end uh, that impacts each and everybody around the country and then, again, around the world. Um, next year is going to be the 10th year anniversary. <clears throat> I'll make sure that I'll send you the link so perhaps it can be posted and people can sign on and just get ready for next year. Uh, so, you know, so that, you know, there could be that, uh, Garifuna aspect to it given that Garifunas are descendants of black Caribs and Arawaks from the island of St. Vincent's in the Caribbean. So, you know, there is space there for leaders. There is space there for the community. There is space there for, to address and, tackle some issues that we're facing that includes um, the issues of land. Uh, that could have been a perfect opportunity this morning uh, to have that. Uh, on Friday, there's going to be a meeting with the State Department. Uh, the State Department, as you know, uh, has been all over the world dealing with um, issues um, on how the country's going to get involved on matters. I know for a fact that there's been an issue of human rights that's been addressed community. So on Friday, there's going to be, we're going to have that meeting with the State Department um, where, again, issues related to, uh, important to the community uh, are going to be addressed if, um, you know, from, from the Caribbean perspective. But tomorrow is going to be much more uh, interesting. Um, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's being kept mum. Um, but every year when we come, it's always fun. Uh, you get to meet and network with other leaders. You get to know what other people are doing in their cities and in these states, and um, and that's always fun. Everyone who comes to D.C., um, they 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 they're the ones who pay for their for their trips, um, um, and um, typically you get caravans, especially from Connecticut coming over, um, Pennsylvania, New York. 
it's a, it's a festive. It's, it, I don't want to say festive when we, it's a party, but there's that there's that air of 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 um, of a community. You know, coming together to make you know uh, community leaders from from blocks across the city or across the country coming together and just put in a face to what the month means to the country and stuff. Right. I want to also send a big shout out to Fidelis Nunez, who is listening in Chicago. Also, Dale Ogaldes, listening in Chicago. Julia Catalan, listening in West Los Angeles. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. We have live on the line via telephone from Washington, D.C., Mr. Jerry Castro Cayetano, who is a Garifuna grassroots advocate, who is always... Um, after the news and after the issues that are affecting Garinagu in America and, of course, in Central America. Jerry, we are so pleased to have you, man, and to know that uh, not only the issues of immigration are affecting, uh, you know, our people, but also the fact that there was just a recent election in New York. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, so the... The 13th Congress, well, on Tuesday, the, there were primaries in New York, um, and uh, the hottest um, primary bot battle took place between State Senator Adriano Espaillat, who has been a member of the New York State Legislature for many years, um, and a longtime uh, pioneer um Congress member Charlie Rangel, who in 1976 uh, became, became the Congress member for the area. Um, the dynamics of that was, uh, and of course, Charlie Rangel won that election again. Um, yeah, I just and, read the news uh, today. They were, yes, he won. He won the election. Um, Congress member Charlie Rangel's district, um, especially. Uh, in El Barrio, which is East Harlem, has plenty of Garifuna voters. Um, and from what we discussed this morning, El Barrio was one of the components that decided the the eventual victory of the Congress member and all that good stuff. Um, so it looks like he's going to be coming back to, to Washington, D.C. Let me emphasize that Congress member Rangel has been uh, a friend of the Garifuna or a friend of the diaspora in his days in Congress. Uh, so he's not a, he's not someone who is unknown to the issues. He's someone who has been in the forefront of a lot of stuff uh, that has benefited uh, our community uh, in when uh, when 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 it comes to uh, giving out aid to. Uh, our countries. Uh, you may remember a couple of years ago with Hurricane Mitch, uh -huh. uh, and how how you how the U.S. especially members of Congress appropriated funds to ensure that you know funds um, uh, hurricane aid was provided and given to uh, to Honduras or uh, countries and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. This was this was efforts that was that was put out. Uh, and supported and pushed by members like Congressman Mem uh, Congressman uh, Charlie Rangel, Sheila Jackson, and, and all of these guys. Beautiful. Thank you, Jerry, for keeping us uh, abreast of what's going on in the political arena in our nation. And you know, let, go ahead. Let me let me let let me just say that uh, the state of Maryland uh, yesterday nominated the first Caribbean American descendant to become governor of the state in uh, Lieutenant Governor Brown. So Prince George County, as many of you know, um, has a very, not a very sizable number of, of Garifuna, but it has a very sizable number of Caribbean Americans um, uh, here, in, here in Prince George County. And, uh, you know, went out yesterday and, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, people came out and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it looks like, uh, Lieutenant 
Governor Brown is going to become the first African American governor of the state of uh, the state of Maryland and the first Caribbean American uh, governor in the nation. Wow, that's good news. Good news. Um, when when you talk about Caribbean Americans, um, we talk about a extensive community of countries that are made up of Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. The closer one to us, Belize is part of it. Uh, even though Belize is not yes. an island because of the legacy of having been a British colony, they were, uh, well, they are part of CARICOM. They are part of that. Uh, hey, they are part of CARICOM, yes. Yes. Uh, how does, does that play uh, as far as Garifuna is concerned? What do you mean, uh, Ronnie? I didn't get the question. Because we have um, Garifuna, it's a community that has, it's transnational, you know, from St. Right. Vincent and the Grenadines, which is also part of CARICOM, to Belize, which is right. another nation with Garinagu, who is part of CARICOM. And the only exceptions are Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Honduras. These three nations are not part well, of, the, of CARICOM. They, they're, they're not voting members of CARICOM. They are part of CARICOM. Um, ah, they are part, they are part, part of CARICOM state. Yes. Oh, including they're Guatemala? Not voting, they're not, yes, but they're not voting members, but, uh, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, they have, uh, a, 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 a working understanding, um, to which the only ones who can vote on matters of CARICOM issues is are those islands or republics and stuff. Um, in addition to that, um, I, I believe the Dominican Republic is not part of CARICOM as well, but wow. it's looking to become part of CARICOM. Yeah, mm, yeah, that that should be, I think, the trend. You know, to be able to accept more nations that have a lot more to do with with the Caribbean because right. they share. A, a common ocean in the, the Caribbean Sea, you know, Dominican Republic, of yes. course. Why not Guatemala? Why not Honduras? Why not Central America, period? It, it would be great. Uh, I mean, I've been following uh, uh, the, the, the the whole component, uh, um, and what, what I was going to mention is that uh, one of the things that's going to happen uh, in uh, in September, if you're listening um, and this is going to come out in the news eventually. Uh, in September, um, you you know from, I believe, early on, early last year, um, late last year, rather, uh, about the issues, uh, uh, about the issue of reparations, uh, which was a, which is a CARICOM-driven effort uh, to bring about reparations to um, descendants of slaves uh, in the Caribbean. Yeah, big um, thing, big thing. We, we we had a member who is working with the, within the, the the whole issue of uh, reparations made an announcement today that there's going to be a bill in the U.S. Congress coming up in September uh, that's being sponsored by Congress member Conyers from Detroit. And, that, and this is going to come up in September, and I'm assuming uh, that a lot of fellas are going to be getting ready to be part of that uh, that whole uh, uh, that whole movement uh, coming up in September and stuff. So this is going to be driven by the um, uh, by the Black Congressional Caucus and its members. Uh, so we're just going to wait on the details on. How 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 that's going to go forward? But yes, it was it was announced this morning that uh, Congress Member uh, Conyers from Michigan, the long-serving Congress Member from Michigan, has a bill on reparations uh, for the Caribbean uh, in the U.S. Congress and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the chances of reparations are big for Caribbean nations compared to any other. Uh, 
I don't want to say nations, but other any other people, including uh, African Americans, due to the fact that there have been cases, isolated cases of people of native descent uh, who have won in international courts uh, regarding the issue right. of reparations or being displaced, taken away, or driven away from their land. Uh, it, it was, it, you know, that was part of the discussion this morning. Um, I'm sure we're going to have more details about it tomorrow, that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, just let you know. And, you know, again, uh, I'm encouraging everybody to, to, to you know, to, to be part of the process. Um, you know, sometimes, yes, we get, you know, bogged down on, you know, what's happening with this and that, but... Um, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what's happening within, you know, your local government, your state government, and your federal government that, you know, should be part of the agenda of, 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 the, of, of the associations and all that stuff. And, uh, this is going to be, this is going to be one, this is one piece of how things are moving on a national level and, and, and how, through whether you're for it or not, you know, eventually it's, it's moving forward. Right. Jerry, um, I had something that I was going to talk to you about real quick, and it just escaped my mind. But I know I know that it has to do with the fact that um, with the Caribbean nations uh, coming together, and we know for a fact that St. Vincent has formed a committee in St. Vincent through the through their prime minister try to organize uh -huh. a joint team to fight for the monies that are going to be at stake for reparations. Um, what is your take right. on that? Well, um, I, I have my feelings, to, my personal feelings towards the matter is that um, if, if the way it was being brought up, it was brought up as a matter that w would have Garrison issues on the forefront. We happen to find out that was not the case. Um, uh, and we don't know where that is today, whether or not uh, the Garrison aspect is, is part of it or, or not. Um, but that's a whole deal with CARICOM and stuff. Um, as far as I, I think that as far as I am concerned, Garifuna were not taken into account. I know that is the okay. leadership coming from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The prime minister invited right. a host of people from the Caribbean nations close to them, and right. they put together this committee, but Garifuna, as a people, were never invited. So my question, right. and this is a question coming from the president of GAFO, Ms. Sharon Norales, she says, so how will the Garifuna interest be represented on the issue of reparation since we are people who were not invited to play a role in this reparations issue? You know, and, and not only and, that... And, and, the, not only that, but Garifuna are still living in exile in Central America today. Right. Right, and it goes, and it goes again to you know, again that leadership aspect, leadership aspect. You know, if 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 we were not part, uh, intricate part in the beginning, and everything is moving forward, um, I doubt that today or now, since it's going to start reaching newer levels, you know, we're going to be part of it as well. Um, this is a matter that we should have been. Uh, leading from the forefront, not leading from behind or from the sideline. You know what I mean? And from the onset, you know, it was questionable how it was going forward. But now the question will be, you know, given that everything is already set, how, like, like, like Sheriff says, how our interests are going to be represented? I, I, I don't know how that's going to be because I have not, um, I have my own, uh, I guess, uh, independent opinion about it. I feel as if, um, you know, um, we, we are a talented group 
um, who have achieved and attained many things. Um, had we used our talents and and everything else, we should have we should have been in the forefront. But that's a question that I cannot answer. That's a question that uh, the people who have been involved, who have been promoting uh, this thing, uh, should uh, at least you know uh, put out you know say, hey, this is what this is these are the interests that we have and this is what we're going to go for. I mean, some tangible stuff. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully that's going to come through, but, um, um, uh, but we, we know not, we know now that it's moving forward and we're going to get more information about it. Um, at the end of legislative week, which we all know now that there's going to be something going, coming up on, um, in September through the, um, black congressional caucus. Jerry, let me tell you something. I understand that the only so-called member of the Garifuna community who was made aware of this reparations team that is being created and uh, manipulated from St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the actual board member of the Garifuna coalition, Mr. Francisco Avila. I know for a fact that he is the only person that flew to the island of St. Vincent at the Caribbean, uh, I mean, uh, St. Vincent at the Grenadines, to be part of one of the sessions of organizing this committee. But, but I mean, that, that's a question that Jose needs to answer. I mean, if he, uh, uh, you know, if he went and, you know, uh, one of the things that we have to understand, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of us try to sort of like minimize leadership as being X, Y, and Z. When you insert, when anyone inserts a community into an issue, then, you know, it, it changes the ball game. Um, you know, and then now here we are uh, with the whole matter of, okay, um, in the beginning, uh, Gonzalo was going around, um, you know, talking about, you know, this was his personal uh, project, or this was his project uh, to which, for one reason or another, you know, he got, he gathered the support from mo most of the members, uh, but he's no longer the chairman of Caricom anymore. You know what I mean? Right. right. Um, you know, n not being chairman of Caricom, you know, how far is going to go? But now it's coming with, with uh, it's coming through the Cong Congressional Black Caucus. Um, you know, uh, you know, how is there room for more members of the community to be part of that of that panel? You know, how can you come over and say that you're going to uh, have representation uh, with a singular view um, but not a plural one you know what I mean yeah um, you know and and and, and you know Gaffin experiences in Central America are different in each country are those different different uh, are those different experiences being implemented in it um, I think that as part of of reparations, I think uh, instead of going to other countries, uh, St. Vincent should uh, give out uh, honorary citizenship uh, to the descendants who were exiled from St. Vincent. But that's yeah. not part of St. Vincent's government. You know what I mean? No, and you know what? Um, that so, was one of the you know, questions that was asked by one of the people who attended the second annual, no, the first annual Garifuna Community Forum in 2005 here in Los Angeles. Uh, this Garifuna person from Belize asked the um, Consul General of St. Vincent for the Western region of the United States. He asked, can we go back to St. Vincent? Can the government of St. Vincent right. accept us and take us back? And guess what the answer was? Right. The answer was no. The country right. is too small. We can't fit all of you. That was the answer. <laughs> uh, there is a comment, a comment from right. Vern Palacio, Vern Palacio here in Los Angeles. He says, I'll go first. I'll go to St. Vincent first. 
for reparations. We feel helpless because most of us, not all, struggle out here in America on a daily just to put food on our table. A big up to Vern Palacio, a very good friend of uh, radio station here, uh, a very good friend of DJ Labuga. Big ups to Vern Palacio. Big up to all of the people listening online, live. We have Mr. Jerry Castro, Garifuna, grassroots uh, advocate. And I um, want to send, uh, send a big shout out to Charlotte Valerio, who's also listening. Dora Valenzuela listening in Los Angeles as well, in the Valley. And many, many other people who are listening from their smartphones who we are not able to 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 identify so many people listening on their smartphones now if you are on a computer and a laptop or a desktop then we're able to see you but anyways we got a lot of people out there got a guy from pablo blanco ronald rodriguez joseph guerrero is listening michael j cordero uh from palmdale on the other side of town of the other of the other side of the mountains here in la is nice chidiosito gonzalez listening from la boga Living here in Los Angeles, Kevin Ramirez, Jacobo Ortiz, the acting manager for RadioCentroAmerica.com, uh, Annalise Barahona, also former queen of the Asociación eh, Guatemalteca, de la Asociación Guatemalteca de Organizaciones Non-Profit. Annalise, uh, big up to you. Thank you for listening. Also, Jackson Sanchez, listening in Houston, Texas. Uh, so, Jerry. Thank you, man, for taking the time. Yes. Uh, we're not saying goodbye yet. We have a lot of things to talk about. Um, so the issue of Garinagu not being taken into account to form part of this committee of reparations organized and spearheaded by the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the homeland of the Garinagu, Yurumin. What do you think? What do you think about this? this, this uh, I, 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 uh, you know, we are very passionate on certain things. We are very emotional on certain things. Um, I think that, um, you know, this is one thing that we should be passionate and emotional about. Um, you know, not being, not being heard, not being represented, uh, not having the opportunity to voice our concerns as a community. Um, but yet, um, it looks like, it looks like if our history, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's part of this whole thing, whether the enslavement part happened, but we know colonialism happened, okay? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, um, it, it, this is something where, you know, it, you should take some time right now and just, uh, you know, um, think for a second, you know, you know, is it okay? You know what I mean? If, if, you know, until, until how long do we have to go that, um, nothing, we have not achieved something as a community. I think this is a, an opportunity. I think that uh, part of the things that people can do is start, you know, sending out uh, emails to, to Ralph Gonzalez. You know, how dare he not he's, include... He's the Prime Minister. Uh, Ralph Gonzalez is the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Jerry, so you have touched a very important point. Now, when we talk about reparations, we're not only talking about reparations because of slavery, because Garifuna right. people were never enslaved. They were basically... Right exile from their country, from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, also known as Yurumain, the land, the homeland of the Garifuna. Uh -huh. They were exiled. They were never enslaved, but they are also qualified to get reparations because up until today, the exiled people are still living in Nicaragua, in Honduras, in Guatemala, in Belize, and now a whole chunk of people of Garifuna descent have migrated to the United States. Now, Jerry, there is another question here by the president of GAFU, Ms. Sharon Norales. She says, Jerry, what is your advice to the Garifuna community and other communities to have a voice and not have other people speak on their behalf or on our behalf who may not have necessarily the best interest at heart? I, I have always said um, that the best way um, to have your voice heard is to be participant of the process. Um, 
politics is not about taking pictures. Uh, it's not about playing drums in front of politicians. Uh, <laughs> politics is not about uh, doing these type of things. You know what I mean? Uh, community activism are not those things. Um, no, uh, and I'm not throwing out that out there because you know unfortunately that's what we have been portraying for several years that in order for you to be recognized that these are the things that you have to do there are other things that you can do okay um for instance in chicago you know we can register people to vote and vote in the local elections because chances are that the city council has a budget and there might be uh, a project that someone in Chicago has to have a, a Garifuna, uh, after school program. Uh, well, Garifuna's pay taxes. Garifuna's work. And under the Constitution, Garifuna's have that right. The only thing that's missing is to have 15, 30, 20, 15, 30, 100, 200 registered Garifuna voters in any council district to go ahead and cast a vote because that's a step of having your voice heard. That's a step to having having a presence in the process. You know what I mean? The rest is going to play it out. Same thing will be in Houston. Same thing will be in Oklahoma. Same thing will be in Akron, Ohio. Same thing will be in New York. Okay? Where, you know, it's the largest population, but yet when you look at the budget, both in the state as well as in the city, there is nothing related to um, having get from the language or get from the after school program. And this is the uh, financial capital of the world, the most prestigious location in the United States. But when we, when you look, when you come down to the actual results, Uotinikata, there is nothing that can sort of like reflect that population when it comes to the budget. Um, <laughs> These are the things that we have to, these are the things that you have to look at. These are the things that speak highly, uh, on, on how things are moving forward. Again, it, it's not, it's not an attack, but actual a reflection on, on the reality that we're living right now. Okay. Everybody is sort of like, Hey, you know what? You know, this, 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 and that. But hey, um, register people to vote. We have young people right now who are at the age of being registered to vote, who can, you know, who can become that face, who can become that voice, who can become that presence. You know, the same thing in Los Angeles. Um, you know, you know, 20, 30 people uh, who can be registered. And you know what? Um, through the budget process, people say that California is broke. But guess what? The cities are not broke. You know, because people are still paying taxes. And when you pay taxes, services have to be provided. And there is no law in the Constitution that says that English is the primary language of the land. No, okay? You can have your language as well as other languages to have to provide services within the city and all that stuff. So the first thing I would say and the recommendation I will have, I will say is let us stop looking at, uh, at, at, at leadership and community activism as the traditional way of entertainment because on the other side of it is an actual business, okay? And we have to get into the business of conducting businesses. You know what I mean? Yes, um, having meetings on weekdays, you know, making sure, again, that, you know, you have banks in your neighborhood. Uh, why not go to the branch and speak to the manager and, hey, you know what? Uh, is it possible for us for you to come over to our meeting and explain to us how can we start our own business. And if you have a business, how can you, what kind of programs do you have at your bank that will retain my business? You know what I mean? And yes. if you have had a business for a long time, do you have any loans that I can use to hire people from the community to provide services uh, for my business to the community and all that stuff? Little things. Same thing with hospitals. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Uh, Everybody has hospitals in their neighborhoods. I mean, how can a hospital be productive or be beneficial to our community? Guess what? Uh, the president passed a, introduced a bill to provide health care uh, a couple of years ago. Well, guess uh, many hospitals are 
into that process right now. So if you know somebody who works in a hospital or if you have been going to a hospital, to one hospital, one clinic uh, for five, six, 20 years, ask the person, you know what? Um, we're going to have a meeting next week. If it's possible for you to come over and talk to us about what kind of services do you provide and how can that service be beneficial to my community because this is one issue that my community, this is one service that my community really needs. It, that's all it takes, you know. So, again, looking at community activism from a traditional way of how things have been done before to now start thinking, you know what, um, I've been going to that supermarket for quite a long time. I wonder if they have somebody who speaks, who can speak three languages because on this zip code there, are, there are several people who speak more than two languages, and I'm one of them. I could be of a service to that company. If not, you know, let me figure out a way on how to have my own business so that this service could be provided to the, to, to the other people and all that stuff. Right, right. And well, a good point. Ladies and gentlemen, this is RadioCentralAmerica.com, the radio station without borders. We have on the line Mr. Jerry Castro Cayetano from Washington, D.C. via telephone call. He is a grassroots and legislative advocate. He will be, he is has been discussing domestic issues affecting Garinagu here in the United States, especially with the illegal immigration and uh, uh, the detention of children who are uh, between the borders of the United States and Mexico right now. Uh, also, the issues of Central America have been uh, discussed, and also he has updated us on the elections in New York with Charles Rangel, uh, Rangel, of course, winning the elections uh, today, as it was announced in the news. This is DJ La Buga, Garifuna Talk and Music. We have a good show tonight. Uh, please pass the word, let your friends know about RadioCentralAmerica.com. We come on live every Wednesday from 8.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. to discuss issues affecting the Garifuna community. This is also a sponsor show by Garifuna American Heritage Foundation United through the Garifuna Language and Culture Academy. Hold on, Jerry. Garifuna American Heritage Foundation United Incorporated uh, through its yeah, uh, Garifuna uh, uh, Language uh, and uh, Culture hold on, Academy hold on. invites hold you to thought. the Saturday classes every Saturday at 11 in the morning at 8039 South Vermont, Los Angeles, California, 90044, corner of 81st and Vermont. For more information, visit our website, www.garifunaheritagefoundation.org or call 323-898-6841. We are right on the corner of Vermont at 81st at the Community Center, Luba Furende Gafu, guest teachers every week. Don't forget, language and drumming as well as Zumba Luma Punta classes for free for all every Saturday beginning March 22nd throughout the year 2014 11 a.m. for the Garifuna language classes and 12 o'clock for the Zumba Luma Punta get fit stay fit with Zumba Luma Punta free classes for the entire family bring your drums and bring the family and we'll have a good time learn Garifuna classes are interactive and you will learn through singing and drumming. Come and learn about the Garifuna culture and history taught by Garifuna scholars from the diaspora. This is an invitation by GAFU, the Garifuna American Heritage Foundation United. This is Radio Centro America with DJ Labuga, Garifuna Music and Talk. Listen to my program every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. on www.radiocentroamerica.com or you could download TuneIn to listen live every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Esta es Radio Centro América y su programa de música y de temas de la comunidad garífuna con DJ La Buga, que se transmite a través de www.radiocentroamerica.com todos los miércoles de 8.30 a 10.30 de la noche. gentlemen we're back we're back this is DJ Labuga live and direct this is your Wednesday show every Wednesday from 8 30 p.m. to 10 30 p.m. we have on the line from Washington Washington DC Mr. Jerry Castro Cayetano Jerry Nomada Idabiangi we're back 
<laughs> Came with ya. Yes, man. I interrupted you. Go ahead. The microphone is yours. No, what I was going to say is, um, I, I forgot the name of the young man, but uh, at the city of Columbus in Ohio has a new a new member of its police department. And it's a young guy from the American, uh, I believe, from Honduras. Yeah, I saw the uh, picture. The sentences from Honduras. I saw the picture yes, of your page. Uh, you know, big, big shout out to the young man. And, uh, you know, I, I, I will be in, in Columbus. Um, in a, in, a, in a few, I don't want to say in the next month, but uh, this is great because you know this is again uh, uh, an example of how you know individuals are just you know representing um, you know their culture, uh, our culture rather, um, you know in in every field, and you know um, big shout out to all of the police officers. Uh, uh, all of the border patrol officers, because I know there are a few, uh, all of our members of military who um, I know are stationed all over the world uh, who may be listening right now. Thank you guys for what you guys are doing. And, yes. you know, you guys are in our prayers. Yes, big up. Big up to all of them. Serving our nation. Proud of that. Yes. So, Jerry, it's been a pleasure, man. Is there anything else you want to address tonight? Uh, before we continue the show, well, uh, uh, I want to tell you that uh, we have a special dedication to Super G, Mr. Lensford Martinez, right. who is uh, uh, flying high, man. The guy is uh, never tired. He's always making music. So we're going to feature his brand new album, Una Noche Mas, tonight. Go ahead, man. You know, you know Super G is, 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 you know, he's from my generation. Uh, and, uh, you know, ever since he came, he was with, uh, Punta Rebels. The guy has been ongoing, never tired, and very glad that he is, he is, uh, you know, continuing the course of promoting, uh, Punta Rock. Uh, funny, funny you mentioned that because we were talking about him again today, uh, with Ms. Lang, Professor Lang. Um, in her documentary of a couple of years ago, and the question was, you know, where does Punta Rock goes from now? Uh, and we touched on the success that Love Boy is going to be having. Um, as you, all of you know, Love Boy is going to be, uh, he's going to become the first guy from the musician to perform over at Houston Carafest on July 4th weekend. Wow. Um, very excited yes. about that. And Love Boy has, has transcended to not to being just a Belizean or Garifuna musician. He has, he has transcended to be a complete musician. And, you know, his history comes from the guys like, you know, um, um, Super G, Asiatic, I mean, all of these great guys and stuff. And very happy that he's going to be on the lineup, um, at Carafest. And, uh, I can't wait to see him because I know he's going to be crazy. Um, but Lover Boy is, Perhaps right now is an ambassador to the general. Um, yes. Right after Andy P, <clears throat> you know, Lover, um, uh, Super G has maintained uh, what he has been uh, pushing for quite a while, and that is the preservation and promotion, the values of Punta Rock, and that's what I respect that man for and all that good stuff. Uh, definitely, definitely, man. Thank you for that comment. I also want to mention that there is a new generation of. Garifuna American youngsters that are in New York that are creating their own kind of genre, their own kind of music. Yes. I mean, they have taken yes. Garifuna music to another level. I personally um, have a hard time connecting with the music, but it's 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 for the youth. Is what they like, you know what I mean? So um, I sometimes use the example of um, the gentleman who used to be the host of the. Uh, uh, TV show for African Americans, the uh, the one with the train, Soul Train. What was the name of the guy who passed away recently? Um, 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 yeah, I know he told, I know he's talking about. Oh God, Don Cornelius. Yeah, I remember Don how, Cornelius. Yeah, That's I right. remember when Don Cornelius uh, was outgrown by the music. Once rap came into the scene, he had 
no, uh -huh. no relationship uh, with the music. He decided to step down. You know, he couldn't deal with it. Now, I don't want to give it a bad connotation, but uh, Garifuna music has been growing. It has been blown out of proportions, but it's for the liking of these new generations, you know. So who are we to judge these kids, you know? They are imitating what right, they learned right. by listening to the music that their parents used to play at home, and they created their own uh, style of it. What do you think? You know, um, a couple of years ago, I had the chance to interview Pen Cayetano, and, you know, Pen Cayetano said it, you know, you know, when we were young, we created something that, you know, thankfully, you know, that's what we have right now. Yeah. And he said, you know, 50 years from now, somebody else is going to create something that, you know, is going to be maintained. You know, it, it's, it, that's what the process goes. That's how the process goes and stuff. Uh, what, what I like to see, what I like, uh, from uh, what the new generation of Punta Rock is doing is how they're use, utilizing social media and the internet to promote the genre. And, and, yes. and, and it's very fascinating. It's very entertaining. Um, and hopefully, you know, looking forward for, you know, little June one day to come over and, you know, accept that award. Um, but I don't think that you know, he had, you know, I, I shouldn't say for him to accept that award because right now he's walking on that path uh, as perhaps the, the, the lead of that youth group, um, on, on a global scale. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, he is, he's doing phenomenal things. He's doing phenomenal things. You know, I watch his videos. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, hey, um, uh, you know, there's nothing but success and good things that hopefully is going to come to the young man for his efforts and, and the work that he has put in um, day in and day out uh, simply to promote the music just like DX Team, just yes. like Outlaws, yes. uh, just like 501, just like, I mean, you have you have a whole new breed of musicians right now to which, you know, we have to pay tribute to, we have to support, and we have to continue doing what we need to do in our own way to make sure that they don't diminish, but they also continue replicating what they have created and all that stuff. Right. Thank you, Jerry. Um, we wish you the best. You are one of my favorite, favorite hosts. You're always entertaining. You're always in the forefront of uh, Garifuna, as far as the political movement is concerned, um, we have a lot of respect for you. We owe it to you, the fact that you have so much patience to sit in meetings, uh, to spend endless hours talking to people, uh, the shakers and the movers of this country. And uh, hopefully one day you will be with them sitting uh, in, in, in writing laws and <laughs> passing laws. And, 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 of course, having a Garifuna a person like you uh, writing laws and creating laws and passing laws is what we need. And that's one step in the right direction, man. We wish you the best. And we thank you from the bottom of heart. RadioCentralAmerica.com management staff, myself, Garifuna Music on Talk, my radio show with DJ La Buga. We thank you from the bottom of my heart. Ms. Cheryl Norales is also here giving you a big hug and a virtual kiss in the forehead, that is. Okay? So... I, 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 <laughs> well, I, you know, uh, the, the reason I, I am not here, uh, you, know, I, you know, part of the... You know, sometimes... You know, like when the first time when I went to the White House, uh, you know, I just had to sit down for a moment and sort of like thank the men and women who have paved the way, you know, even though they never got the chance, uh, to perhaps to be where, where they had opened the door for me. I'm always appreciative of, of those guys. You know what I mean? There are, yeah. there are countless of men and women who have done so much for us to be here today. And, you know, for me, I take it very seriously because those guys gave up their lives. Those guys gave up a sacrifice. Those, those guys had to be away from their family. And the best thing we have to do right now is to just honor that by just doing, continuing their vision, continuing their, their hopes. You know what I mean? Yes. And it, that's why I'm passionate on what I do because somewhere along the line, someone thought about me back in the day that one day, 
you know, this will be happening, just like how I'm thinking about that next person in that next community a couple of years from now who perhaps will become that person who's going to write laws, who is going to become perhaps a nominee for the president of the United States or mayor of the city of Los Angeles or a city council member in, in, in California or a attorney general in New York. You know what I mean? Uh, these are the things that we have to do right now and stuff. And, yes, it's exciting to, to be part of it, but, yes, I have to. I, I would not be where I am today had it not be for those men in, the, in, in, in back in the days, or because of my family, to which I have a great support of today. And of course, you guys who day in and day out, you know, whether I call for advice or hey, Ronnie, you know, this needs to be done, or can you, can you, what do you think? You know, these are the things that sort of like go forward and all that stuff. Yes. Jerry, before you go, I wanted to ask you to give us a few words as far as what the national team of Honduras did, which was made up of basically the majority Garifuna, a lot of Garinagu who played for Honduras. Uh, I know they had a very sad uh, three games. They couldn't win one, but what is your take on that? It's not sad. Let's, let us not, let's stop. Uh, you know, you know, it say that it was sad. Uh, there, there were many countries who wish to be where the Honduras national team is and was, uh, today in the World Cup. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, yes. we have to be proud. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, all I wanted was to see a goal. I missed it because I was in, uh, I was in the briefing. Uh, but I heard it was a goal. That, that's a huge victory, you know, uh, for those in 1982 who who happened to see that team, you know, go forward. Now, this is our 1982, you know what I mean? And on the next World Cup, yes, they're going to win one. You know what I mean? Uh, send them, uh, they're going to win one, and perhaps one of these days, they're going to become like Costa Rica has become. Many years ago, that's the same thing people said about Costa Rica. Many years ago, it's the same things people said about uh, the, the the U.S. the U.S. team. I remember Mexico, 1990, when uh, this white kids came in trying to play soccer, and everybody was joking about them. Now look at where they at now. You know, it's not it, it's not it doesn't it, it's it's a process. You know what I mean? Uh, but you have to be proud of what these guys are doing, especially uh, El Hijo del Viento. Um, Marvin Chavez, who I uh, interviewed uh, a year ago in Houston, uh, when he came over, and he has he always has this uh, ways of reflecting and showcasing, you know, his culture and girlfriend and all that stuff, and typically through his haircuts and stuff. You know, <laughs> you have to be very proud of that. You know, yes. whether they lost, the fact that they made it there, yes, it was disappointing, but at the end of the day. There were other countries who wished to be where Honduras is at today, and for that we have to be proud. Yeah. And for, for that we have to take our hat for them because they they represent it the best way they can. Yes, no, definitely. Thank you, Jerry. We love you, man. Have a great evening. I know it's late where you are. You are three hours ahead of us. So God bless you, brother, and uh, we'll be there for the wedding, man. Ha ha, ya? No, thank you, and again, um, have a blessing. Just think about, you know, last very last words. Uh, in order for us to become visible, you have to get engaged. You know what I mean? It, yes. It's going to depend on what you're going to do today and how that's going to translate into action tomorrow. Okay, um, waiting for Jesus is, is okay, but making miracles depends on you. So <laughs> you have to take that action. You have to take that responsibility. You know, we can pray, but at the end of the day, again, you have to make that miracle come through. And that's what uh, community activism is all about. And thank you again, once again. Love you guys, and see you guys very soon. Hey, you can say that again, brother. Thank you so much. Ayo, Mr. Jerry Castro. Good to go. Boom, you boom, no matter. Hi, bro. Hi, bro.
This is the brand new album from Mr. Super G. Mr. Lensford Martinez released this album in late 2013. And it's an all Spanish album. Una Noche Mas is the name of the album. One More Night. And we're featuring his music tonight. We are going to play the album in, in its entirety. And then we're going to play the other hits from Super G. Thank <laughs> you. 
eso, nena, no. No, no, nena, no. No me digas eso, nena, no. No, 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 no. no. Loco en el coco, loco en el coco, me haces loco. Central America. This is the album that was released in late 2013. Very unknown to a lot of people, but just to let you know that you could look it up on iTunes, CD Baby, Amazon. You could find the album under the name Una Noche Mas and download the entire album for $9.99 or each song for 99 cents. So this is DJ La Buga Garifuna Music on Talk. We are live. We just had earlier during the show uh, Mr. 
Jerry Castro Cayetano, a Garifuna Grassroots Advocate who is in Washington, D.C. right now dealing with the issues of immigration, uh, especially the illegal immigration going on in the border between Mexico and the United States with a lot of, where a lot of children from Garifuna descent are being detained, uh, of course, because they cannot illegally enter the United States. Uh, along with the children, there are parents, and some of the parents are, of course, not with the children. They were separated, uh, of course, because it's, it is uh, easier for an adult to get deported back to um, either Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, or El Salvador, or Nicaragua than it is for a child. A child, it is a different case. Uh, so far, there is thousands of children being detained um, in different locations uh, along the border between Mexico and the United States. So that was Jerry Castro earlier today. He also talked about some of the issues concerning the Garifuna community in the United States and abroad in Central America. We talked about the issue of reparations through the movement that was started by Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, where Garinago were left uh, uh, out of the picture, you know, there is, uh, as we know, only one person of Garifuna descent who was invited and who participated in um, this committee, who is the board member of the Garifuna coalition, Mr. Francisco Avila. As far as we know, he is the only one, and we we have not heard anything from Francisco or from the prime minister after that meeting. Um, I know there is the issue of reparations for uh, what uh, a lot of Caribbean people suffered during the slave trade and for the Garifuna as it pertains to the exile because Garifuna were never enslaved. Uh, they were exiled from their homeland, Yurumain, which is St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Up until today, they are living in exile in Honduras, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Belize, and many of them have migrated since the early 40s to the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DJ La Buga live from Long Beach, California. That's where we have the studios on www.radiocentroamerica.com. This is Radio Centro America with DJ La Buga, Garifuna Music and Talk. Listen to my program every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. until 10.30 p.m. on www.radiocentroamerica.com or you could download TuneIn to listen live every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Esta es Radio Centroamérica y su programa de música y de temas de la comunidad garífuna con DJ La Buga que se transmite a través de www.radiocentroamerica.com todos los miércoles de 8.30 a 10.30 de la noche. Escúchenos. Ladies and gentlemen, we're featuring the brand new album from Super G, Mr. Lensford Martinez. This is Una Noche Más. This song is called Mini Falda. Que es lo que mira que alguien me lo diga Lo que yo veo sabes que me gusta Poco a poco Corto la distancia Para abajo y sube tu cadera Trabajado para que nadie te lo vea Mueve, mueve lo que tu mami te dio Que te tome poco por no tengas miedo Si te vuelve ya se vivió te lo bajo Si te importa que te estás chequeando Dime si te gusta lo que estás escuchando Que esa maldita lo quiero me le manda Yo tu cuerpo en este mini no tiene defecto Después del baile te llevo contigo Porque
burning wing of fire I went down, down, down And the flames went higher And it burns, burns, burns The ring of fire The ring of fire Gentlemen, we are reached. We have reached the end of the show. I'm gonna play one more song tonight, and I'm gonna say good night. This is DJ Labuga live and direct from Long Beach, California, through www.radiocentralamerica.com. I want to thank all of the listeners, wherever you are. Chicago, Miss Dale Ogaldes, Miss Fidelis Nunez in Chicago as well. Jerry Castro Cayetano, who was just on the radio with a nice and long and very detailed interview of the work that he's doing in the Garifuna community through his grassroots movement as an advocate, a political advocate, that is. Also, a big shout-out to Nayendi, Nayendi Lewis, Lewis, whose birthday just passed away, so happy birthday to you, girl. Randolph Enriquez, Dora Valenzuela listening, Yolanda Sabio, as well as... Uh, many, many people out there. Man, it's hard to remember everybody who was online. But I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Next week, Wednesday, we'll see each other again. We have another date with DJ Labuga, 8.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now we have a good song that I love. It's from Taprik. Taprik from Belize. And this is called Stop Shush Pan Me. Well, I know this is the back again. You shake by the tongue. We got them as fake rumors for me, funny tongue, you know. But you know, they got something that all the bad minded people live. My God! Give them a fight! The more they hate, the more I rise. The more they shush, the more I rise. The more they hate, the more I rise. Stop the shush for me. The more they hate, the more I rise. The more they shush, the more I rise. The more they hate, the more I rise. Stop the shush for me. We don't live to be a little. Big, big, big shout out to Charlotte Valerio, also listening in Los Angeles. And of course, uh, our very good friend is Williams. Yes, que motia, wa bina ha, wa fedu ha, luma DJ la buga.